You're listening to the NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network, part of Sports Illustrated, giving you daily NFL Draft, Dynasty, and Devi Fantasy Football Podcasts. Class is in session. Welcome into the draft seminar presented by Sports Illustrated's NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. I'm your host, Matt Hicks, the FF educator, joined as always by John Lobb, the gridiron scholar. And John, one of my cardinal rules of playing fantasy football is you play for upside. And my goodness, I don't think I could give you more upside, but also a whole lot of risk here with Tamori and Terry, the wide receiver out of Florida State. Last summer, Matt, you and I broke down the Florida State Seminole star. And I definitely was attracted by the upside. And I waxed poetically about what he could be at the NFL level if he hits his ceiling. And you were absolutely like, John, slow down. There's a lot of drops on that tape. There's things that I don't necessarily love. And I think this year he landed more on your side of the equation and the ledger than he did on mine, unfortunately. And now there are major concerns. If the young man can get everything together, I do think he has the ceiling, but the odds are getting smaller and smaller right now than they were a year ago. He was a four-star prospect in high school, and he ends up at Florida State. And my friends... In context, Florida State's offense has been terrible. Their quarterback play is, I mean, i if anyone's watching, name three Florida State quarterbacks over the last five years. I dare you. <laughs> it's tough. And the offensive line, we talked a lot about it with Cam Akers last year. So there were flashes where Tamori and Terry was unbelievable in that context of that offense. And in 2019, he was second team all SACC map with 60 receptions for 1,188 yards and nine touchdowns. The year before, in 2018, he was all ACC honorable mention. So last summer, I was very hopeful that Tamori and Terry would take the next step forward. He holds the program record with five 70 plus receiving yard touchdowns. He recorded nine 50 plus receiving touchdowns in the open field. When he gets an angle or he gets behind someone, he just blows the competition away. But Matt, it was a very disappointing 2020. There's really no reason to go through the numbers. It was kind of that bad, and he ended up stepping away. So he did not opt out, but it was not a season that opened any eyes. That's for sure. And we didn't even see the dynamism that we did the year before with Terry. Then he had his pro day. He clocked a 4-4-4, which was nice, but there were some people – who thought he might do like a 4-3-9, like just might blow it off the water. And the thing that kind of shocked me the most, when you watch the tape, he looked much bigger than his defensive, than the opponents, right? I thought he was probably in the 6-4-2-20 range, would just make him such a physical freak compared to other wide receivers. Matt, he measured at 6-2-207, which is nice size. But it did not reach the level where you're like, okay, he's so much bigger than everyone else, so much stronger. Now, he's still very strong, but I now think he's going to be a day three. He might even be a fifth round pick right now, which would really limit his fantasy value. Matt, what does your grading system say when you watch the film? It's very interesting with Tamori and Terry. I mean, you, we've we've talked about it a lot. There's upside and there's risk. His yards after catchability, John, he's an absolute danger in open space. And that's fun. He's got a nice juke move. He breaks defenders really consistently. Everyone kind of knows the big play against Boise State. 
If you don't just, you know, look for it, it'll yeah. come up, I promise. And you could see that upside there. He's an overall athlete. He's a fluid player, John, before the catch, after the catch. He's got really quick feet, and that helps him win consistently. Now, he's not the fastest guy, but you you just mentioned it. He's good, and he's best, John, when running in a straight line. Put him on the boundary, let him run in a straight line, and he has good acceleration. Now, his route running, that's when things start to get interesting. He actually runs some pretty sharp routes. He does nice, some nice stop-and-go routes, but he wasn't asked to do a whole ton at Florida State. They really just let him run the fly a lot, which didn't make sense because none of their quarterbacks can throw the ball. But he does beat defensive backs at times with subtle body movements. He's got loose hips, and he has good contact balance, John. He's rarely ever pushed off a route. He's kind of what you want in a boundary receiver, right? Prototypical boundary receiver. So I think he's got a shot at the next level. I have an 86 yards after catch ability, 84 athleticism, 81 speed, 81 route running. In 80, by the way, it's not on the slide here if you're watching the video, but also an 80 in contested catch. I know that's something that a lot of folks like about Tamori and Terry. He can go up and get the ball. So despite the fact that I do, John, expect him to be a day three prospect, I'm going to put him in from a fantasy football projection as a flex filler because if he lands in the right spot with a QB with a nice arm and hopefully he's not expected to contribute right away, right? It might take us a couple of years. I think Tamori and Terry can contribute at the next level, which is going to help him contribute for fantasy football purposes. But John, let's flip on the tape and let's look at some of this upside in action. I'm sure we're going to see some of these big plays by the Florida State star here. And as always, we're going to see right off the bat, here's the Boise State wow. cut. Here it is. Here's what I was talking about. Beats that first guy. Second guy, oh, uh, just don't even bother. All right. Once he gets past that third guy, don't even bother. It's a breakaway touchdown. By the way, video, as always, provided by Brandon Lejeune, Debbie Deep Dive on YouTube and Twitter. And we're going to see here, look at that stop, John. His ability to flip his whole body around yes. in that quick 180. That's athleticism, that's loose hips, that's yards after catch upside. It's not just breaking guys. And this next play here against Miami, you see that contested catch ability. He goes up, makes this defensive back look absolutely silly. And John against North Carolina State, there's the speed. There's a lot getting put together here on the Tamori and Terry tape. Absolutely, and we've seen some slants. I don't think he's the most crisp slant route runner, but if he improves on that, with his body and frame and his second-level vision, he could be very dangerous on that route in the NFL, map. And, John, on back-to-back -back plays here, Florida and Virginia Tech, you see Tamori and Terry turn around, come back, react well to an underthrown ball, and he tracks it really well. That's not easy to do for somebody of his size to be able to flip his body that quickly. So there's a ton of upside again. That's the word we're just going to keep using. Yes. I mean, there might be a team, a scouting department, who sees a young man and will draft him specifically for the ceiling as a boundary pass catcher in the NFL. And there we go again. He does also track the ball well deep, Matt. He does do that also. Exactly. In Arizona State here, you're seeing that straight line acceleration. You're going to see it again here against Whoa. Boston College. And he John, one of the things that I think is going to help Terry specifically in this year's draft class, it's not known for its speed. So he, that's going to give you know him a boost, I think, in the draft class where at the top it's small receivers. I think he's going to have a shot to stand out a little bit amongst his peers despite all the yellow flags that we've been pointing out here along the way. Let's go back to his production profile, John. How does it line up for what you're looking for? Man, I think if he had played a full season this year, and if he had shown a little bit improvement, his production model would be insane. So we really only have about two and a quarter years on that production model. So you have 118 receptions for 2,221 yards. But Matt, someone's going to look at that 18.8 .8 yards per reception, and they're going to say, I want that young man on my team he can get down the field and i think he might have the second he might have the best second level vision of a wide receiver he's awesome 20 yards down the field and he's he has 
football speed. You don't see him chase down. I mean, he ran a 4-4, but you don't see him chase down in the open field. And look at that 2019 season. Catch percentage, 57%. Now, you had pointed out correctly last year. He does have some pretty ugly drops. His hands aren't perfect. However, he also does not have very good quarterback play. So, you know, it's okay, that number. Let's put it into, into context. I don't think he's a great hands catcher. You know, he's not in the Elijah Moore mold or anything like that, but I think he's adequate. Team aerial dominator, 34% basically of the entire passing offense. I mean, he was the Seminoles passing game two years ago. He's a long strider who catches the ball well. We mentioned he's 6'2", 207. He's not the physically intimidating athlete that we thought he was. Draft capital is going to mean a lot. I still look at his ceiling. I think it's very high. I will be fascinating to see where he lands and read reports how the young man is doing in training camp, Matt. All right, there you have it. Tamori and Terry, the wide receiver out of Florida State. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Draft Seminar presented by NFL Sports, NFL Draft Bible Podcast Network. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you are watching, please make sure you are subscribed if you are listening. And as always,